This episode of Because Science is sponsored by Fallout 76. Our future begins on November 14th, 2018. Would Gwen Stacy actually survive her fall? What I love about Spider-Man is that he's just a person. He has to balance life and work, love and career. But in Peter Parker's case, that balance brings tragedy. In one of the most famous comic panels of all time, Peter Parker loses his girlfriend Gwen Stacy to the tyranny of gravity. Though if we go back to this situation and analyze it like science whiz Peter Parker would, would Gwen really have died? I'm not so sure. The panels in question are from Amazing Spider-Man number 121, which debuted 45 years ago. In the panels, Gwen Stacy meets her end after falling from a bridge, but it's not the fall that kills her. In an effort to arrest her fall, Spider-Man shoots a lifeline and grabs Gwen by the ankle. Tragically, the web stops her so quickly that the ensuing whiplash snaps her neck. The night that Gwen Stacy died is obviously canon and sciencing it won't change anything. Still, I think it would make Peter Parker proud if we re-evaluated the event with all the data and all the numbers that we could find. First, where did Gwen Stacy actually fall from? That simple fact has been a point of controversy because the original comic book panels mislabeled the bridge. So in 2004, Stan Lee clarified that this bridge is in fact the Brooklyn Bridge and not the George Washington Bridge. And if that's the case, then Gwen Stacy fell from a height of 84 meters, the height of the bridge. Now though, we have to start making some assumptions. Over the years, numerous other comic books have depicted this event, and in them, sometimes Gwen Stacy looks like she's falling the entire length of the bridge, sometimes just a little bit. We are gonna go with an exactly middle ground assumption and assume that Gwen Stacy fell before Spider-Man caught her 42 meters. Hit. If we guess that Gwen fell maybe half the height of the bridge before the web stopped her, then we can use her enemy in this story, gravity, to get her instantaneous velocity right before she was stopped. And we're gonna do that using a free fall equation and plugging in Earth's acceleration due to gravity and the distance that she fell, 42 meters. Plugging in all of the numbers, you get a velocity for Gwen right before she was caught by the web of 29 meters per second, about half of the terminal velocity of a human in air. <laughs> You can find a number of analyses online and in books of Gwen Stacy's death, and they all more or less stop here. They take Gwen's instantaneous velocity like we just calculated and assume that she stops very, very quickly, and therefore the G-forces put on her body would kill her. But we're not gonna do that. Instead of assuming that Spider-Man's web is perfectly rigid, which would put a lot of G-forces on Gwen's body, we are gonna instead consider the material itself and its closest analog, spider silk. Because if spider silk isn't perfectly rigid, if it is in fact very stretchy, that changes everything. To find out Gwen Stacy's fate, we need the real properties of spider silk. So get me numbers for spider math! You probably already know that spider silk has some truly amazing properties. Gram for gram, a strand of spider silk is stronger than a strand of steel. However, a strand of Kevlar is stronger than them both. Despite what you may have heard, spider silk weight for weight is not the strongest material. However, strength is a very specific engineering term. Where spider silk really shines is in its toughness, how much total energy spider silk can absorb before breaking. This is a stress versus strain graph. It shows how much stress or force per unit area a material can take as it stretches some percentage of its original length. And as you can see, spider silk can absorb a lot more energy than either Kevlar or steel as it stretches. And it can stretch quite a bit. Spider silk achieves its spectacular stretchiness and toughness thanks to evolution. Over hundreds of millions of years, Mother Nature has turned spider silk into an expert example of nanoscale engineering. 
Spider silk does behave like a spring at the smallest scales, but a spring with built-in reinforcement. Look at spider silk underneath a powerful microscope and you see that it's a tangle of stretchy proteins supported by more rigid nanocrystals. It's kind of like the tiniest rubber bands you can imagine supported by molecular anchors. As scientists have discovered through testing, when you pull spider silk, the first thing to stretch, maybe obviously, are those stretchy proteins. And then the nanocrystals start to provide reinforcement as you pull even more, and then everything starts to stretch, and then failure comes afterwards. Sorry. Sorry. Let's look again now at that toughness graph. We know that spider silk is very tough, that it can absorb a lot of energy before it breaks. But let's look again at the strain side of this graph. Strain is how much a material stretches based on its original length. Spider silk, studies have shown, can stretch up to 40% its original length while maintaining its toughness. Imagine that. That's like having a material that's as tough, relatively speaking, when it's one foot or nearly a foot and a half. Not many materials can do that. Spider silk is special, and so is Gwen Stacy. If spider silk can stay so strong as it stretches so much, then it would stretch after it caught Gwen, which would increase the time it took for her to slow down, which would decrease the forces on her body, which might save her. So let's go be a hero. All right, let's lay out everything that we know. We know, based on our assumptions, that Gwen has fallen 42 meters when Spider-Man catches her. At that point, she will be going 29 meters per second. We're also gonna assume that Gwen Stacy has a mass of 50 kilograms, that Spider-Man's webs, when he shoots them, have about the cross-sectional area of a pencil, and finally, we do not want Gwen to experience a deceleration more than six Gs, because that's a good survivable limit for so-called eyeballs up deceleration. We also know that when Gwen Stacy is caught, there will be two forces acting on her, her weight and the tension or pulling force from Spider-Man's web on her leg. And if we model spider silk like a spring with a spring constant K, which determines the tension force based on X, the displacement, how much it stretches, we can use the sum of these forces to plug in our maximum acceleration and get at how far the spider silk is stretching. I know, I can sense that you think this is a lot of math, but trust me, it's worth it. There is, there is a lot more math though. The last thing that we know for sure about Gwen Stacy's unforgettable fall is that according to physics, the energy that her body has before she is caught has to equal the energy afterwards. If we set these two energy equations equal to each other and plug in all of our numbers and assumptions and use all the other equations at our disposal, we will have all of the mathematical gadgets we need. But I'll do the rest. If we say that Gwen Stacy might be able to survive her fall, if we can keep her G's under six, then we can start guessing at the amount of stretch the spider silk would need to slow her down safely. And we have to guess because there are so many very variables at play here, you can't just pick one value and get an answer. No, we have to start plugging distance values into all of our equations and get a closer value. And then put that closer value back into all of our equations and get an even closer value. And do that over and over and over again until we get the one true value. And when you do all that, as I did, you get a stretchiness that the spider silk would have to have to keep her acceleration under six Gs of between four and 500 megapascals. Now, I know that doesn't sound like anything special without context, so here's the best part. Thanks to the number of spider species, there is a huge range in the stretchiness of spider silks, from 100 megapascals and under to 10 gigapascals and over. So our value fits within the range of real spider silks. And the displacement that we found from all of our math, the amount that the spider silk would have to stretch after it caught Gwen Stacy is around 16 or 17 meters, which is based on 42 meters of her fall 39% elongation, which fits perfectly into our stress strain curve. And if Spider-Man is using pencil thick web lines, it has more than enough tensile strength to handle all of these forces. So if Spider-Man in an attempt to save Gwen Stacy used actual spider silk, she might've lived. 
So would Gwen Stacy actually survive her fall? Well, based on our estimations and math and numbers, I think she very well could have. Again, I know that her fate is technically canon and there's nothing that we can do to change that. In reality, she may have fallen at a weird angle and so when the web caught her ankle, her neck wasn't perfectly straight and there was a weird rotational force and it caused her death. Unfortunately, that kind of thing does happen. But I do think it is amazing that, in theory, the numbers are in poor Peter Parker's favor. He did the right thing trying to save her with analog spider silk. After all, spider silk literally evolved to be as stretchy and as gentle as possible. That is why prey gets caught in spider webs and not bounced off of spider webs. There are a number of alternate universes in comic books, so here's another one. One where Peter Parker actually did everything a spider could do, and Gwen Stacy is alive. Because science. Hey, what are you doing here? A lot of nerds like myself will quibble about what actually killed Gwen Stacy, but if you go to the panels, it's even worse what the Green Goblin says killed Gwen Stacy. I think he says, a fall from that height would kill anyone through the shock of the sudden fall alone before she hit the ground. No. Thank you again to Fallout 76 for sponsoring this episode of Because Science. Bethesda Game Studios, the award-winning creators of Skyrim and Fallout 4, welcome you to Fallout 76, the online prequel where every surviving human is a real person. Work together, or not, to survive. Under the threat of nuclear annihilation, you will experience the largest, most dynamic world ever created in the legendary Fallout universe. Fallout 76 will be available worldwide on Wednesday, November 14th, but you can pre-order the game at participating retailers today. Play the beta first on Xbox One. Thank you so much for watching, Chrissy, and a huge thanks to Alan Pan for his help on this video. If you want more of me, go to Alpha, which you can do at projectalpha.com, or if you go now and sign up for a free trial, you can get this show two days earlier than anyone else and other premium content from me and Nerdist and Geek and Sundry, like Orbital Redux. If you want to follow Because Science and me on social media, you can do so right here and suggest ideas for future episodes and like, subscribe, and you know, whatever the kids are saying. Thanks.